Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Um, by virtue of time constraints, and I'm talking about months-long time constraints, we're going to jump right to working on the Reaper. Oh, oh, oh. All right, we're getting rid of him. Oh, but first, check this out. How adorable is that little thing? That is a needle minder that uh, my husband bought for me for Christmas, which literally just came in the mail the other day. Um, it's like, I don't know, it took like a solid five, six weeks, came from the UK, but oh, it's so cute, it's so pretty, I love it. Um, I actually might just wear this because it's got, you know, it's got a really super strong magnet, so I could literally wear it um, sometimes. Um, I might do that. I, right now I have it up uh, at, at downstairs next to my computer. I have like this uh, card that's up on my uh, wall and I just connect it through the card so I put it up there because I'm like, I'm not really using it as a needle minder. I'm almost using it like as a little um, dec decorative thing or whatever, but put that around over there. You can't see it. It's around the kind of side there. There we go. Um, all right, but let's get to work on some repo. Oh, I just got some stitching done last night for the first time since my video because there have been a variety of different semi-emergency type business related things that I've had to attend to. And it's been a very stressful week. One of the most stressful I've had. I've had a lot of stressful weeks. This week was pretty bad. Um, it's all working out now. Well, I shouldn't say it's all working out now. There are things that aren't going to work out. Sad things, you know, Kobe Bryant stuff and whatnot. But, but I did get some stitching done last night. Specifically, I worked on all this area, filling in all this, and then I've moved kind of up in this area, and I come down here, come on here. And so, but that's where we're at. We're going to get a lot more stitching done on this. I was really kind of struggling to find just the right, move this down here, just the right needle for this job because I want something that has an eye that's large enough for me to thread fairly easily, but a small enough um, needle point or end that I can, what am I doing, by the way? Oh, here I am, okay. I'm like, what's going on? Uh, so, so yeah. So I got a different needle out. I still haven't found those um, embroidery needles. I shouldn't say found. Still haven't looked for those embroidery needles that when you guys, or more than, more than one of you guys, I'm gonna end this one, uh, have mentioned to me the ones that have more of the the ballpoint instead of the sharp point. A ballpoint certainly wouldn't go into my foot or my hand as easy as this does, because it does. Um, yeah, man, I stepped on a needle the other day and it went in, I think it went in a, like half an inch into my foot, like the ball of my foot. It's not very bright of me, not very bright indeed. Alright, hold on, we're going to highlight just a smidge to finish up what I was working on last night with all this up, y'all. So it's about 3, 4 o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. And I got home from work and I am going to definitely take it easy for the rest of the weekend, which makes me very happy. Hopefully I can get some more stitching, a nice little chunk of stitching done because it has been not my kind of week for that, which is sad, so sad. Ah, <sighs> it's cold. It is, it's not cold. It's nice and warm outside right now. It's like in the 50s or something, but it is going to be cold shortly. Hold on a second. So I'm gonna try this, this needle. 
Oh, I need my glasses. Oh, eyes are getting worse and worse. All right. Man, I really feel like... Have you guys noticed... Is this two strands or one? I just... In picking up some new... Um, DMC... I forgot if I... I can't remember if I got this from local or if I got it from something else but I got this yeah this isn't gonna work this is really fuzzy DMC and I'm not used to this um, I don't know if you can see it I don't know if it's gonna show up but it's just it's a little thicker and fuzzy and it it's not a bad thing except when you need to use a very small needle and you're like, I can't get it threaded. And I went through this several times last night and couldn't get it done. So we're just going to put that aside. I'm going to have to use a larger needle for that. So we're going to go back to the standard, the old standard. It's all good. But, uh, anyway. Yeah, I just, I'm like... I kept looking at it thinking, well, that's got to be three strands instead of two. Nope, it was two. They were just big fuzzy strands. Big fuzzy strands. All right. Get my fingers together. I have really done a number on my fingers this week. My paper cuts, and I got scratched by a cat there. Caught me... And last week it looked a lot worse. Um, I can't remember if it was Monday or... No, it wasn't Monday. It was before that. But it left me with a little divot right there. And then... Let's see. This part of my thumb is trying to crack a little bit right now. So I'm going to need to make sure I put stuff on it tonight. This thing is the thing that still bugs me, though. And then... Um, where's that paper cut? Paper cut was right here. Um, I was actually trying to scan documents... I was switching the scan documents, and I'm like, what kind of a fool cuts off their finger while they're scanning? Because, you know, that paper cut, I almost cut my finger off. No, I didn't. But anyway, all right, what number is this? All right, here we go. I got to scoot a little closer. Anyway, mumbling, jumbling, bumbling, rumbling. Rumbling, bumbling, bumbling. Roll and roll and roll and roll and roll. All right. So I have no qualms with doing this color that will take us down through here. We can you definitely use this one. I've just got to see. Oh nope. I gotta skip that one. I gotta do this one here. Okay. Man. I feel it's the, physically the best I've felt in a week. I think today. Sleeping like a maniac. You guys aren't even able to see this. Let me bring this further down. Oops. But, oh yeah, so weather. So, 50s today. I don't even know what the weather's going to be like tomorrow. I just looked at the forecast. And then Monday night, we're supposed to get like at least 6 inches of snow. And then Tuesday, the high is going to be like 18. It's going to be a little ridiculous. And there's that. So, buttons, so buttons. Anyway, so what else is going on? Oh, I have, <sighs> what am I gonna say? How am I gonna say this? I have a surprise. But I can't tell you guys what it is yet. But it's a good surprise. It's stitching related surprise. I'm going to tell you guys this. But until I see said surprise, I'm not going to not going to share it with really anybody other than the folks that I've already shared it with. So it's going to be awesome. Okay, I'm getting all kerfuffled. You know how there are days when you just can't do anything right with your fingers, your hands, or anything? 
This is, it's not really how this day started out, but it's how this day is turning. It's what this day is turning into. There we go. Anyway, so I've got a stitching surprise coming up. go hmm what a second I'll say wait 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 a second one two three four five six seven eight it's all good so Rolling, 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 rolling. Rolling, 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 rolling. Stuck at that song in my head. Don't ask me why. I haven't heard it. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I'm sitting here just thinking about which different projects I might work on later today. I need to get that page done in apothecary shop. I kind of want to work on baseball since I'm getting close to finishing up a couple pages there. Oral map 2 is not calling to me right now, which means I kind of need to just, I need to push through on that page. I think it's because I just know the how slow it's going to be that I'm just not wanting to work on it. Oh, man. Oh. My hands are cold. Roll, roll, roll. I thought I could hear cat, but I'm pretty sure cat's in the next room. I shouldn't be hearing cat purr. I think I need to move the um, hamster away from the corner of the room because I think that hamster is cold. I never see hamster out anymore, running around doing stuff. And she's definitely... She knows when it's time to eat, or when I go to feed her, she runs downstairs and what? It runs downstairs. She runs down to the main level of her uh, little home. But yeah, I wonder if it's too cold for her. The birds are doing okay, but they're mostly on a they're on a um, inside wall, so. <sighs> Could have nap today. Husband suggested I nap. I'm like, yeah, it's already like once I hit like about two thirty, it's like no, unless I commit myself to uh, staying up late. 
And I'd rather not stay up late. I'd rather go to bed at the normal hour. Because it would be, it's just better that way. It makes tomorrow better. Tomorrow. Ooh. So, what else we got? Oh, we got Super Bowl tomorrow. We'll watch. It should be a good one this year. But uh, I don't know who's going to win. I really don't. And I like that. I like that I don't know who's going to win. I think it's going to be a close game. But I don't know. I don't think we're planning on doing anything special for it. I mean, we're staying home. I'm not getting out of these comfy clothes until Monday morning. I have to go back to work. So I'm going to be in the comfy clothes. But I'm just going to end this strand here. Um, yeah, I have no clue. Welcome to a very sleepy stitch with me. Sleep with me. Let's all take a nap. Ooh, boo, boo, boo. So, let's see, what have I been spending my days with? So, outside of the craziness of work with this project we're trying to do, and eventually I'll be able to talk about it, but we're getting there. Not really. We haven't really made any progress. Everything kind of fell apart this week, and then I built it back up. I'm building it, building it, building it. Um, but... Did y'all see what happened to the needle? Here it is. Connected to the scissors. Haha. <laughs> um, but the other thing I've been following really closely is this whole, don't you'll hear me out, is this whole thing with um, the virus in China. No, I'm not talking politics. I will not talk politics on this channel. This isn't politics. This is public health. And... Uh, Trying to get preachy. I mean, I don't think I'm going to get preachy. I'm just... There are some things that will, for various reasons, grab my attention. And I don't like how some are trying to push down talk of this virus. I mean, you can talk about it from a purely scientific perspective. Um, but, and there's nothing we can do, like, as just regular people right now about it, <sighs> but educate ourselves. And the thing that bugs me is somebody who has studied epidemiology, public health, yeah, we were actually forced, forced, we're forced, we were forced, I don't know if they're still forced, but we took classes in all kinds of things in vet school, and that was one of the things that we took classes in. Um, not that I'm an expert by any means, but I can read and understand studies and whatnot, and gotta say, this particular breakout is, not breakout, this particular outbreak is very concerning to me. Now, let's jump to the, let's skip to the end here real quick. The reason why I'm concerned about it is just because um, 
you know, I have various loved ones that are older, I worry about them, and this is a virus that when it comes, not if, but when it comes here, you know, could affect some of them. And I worry about, and I worry about just all kinds of people and whatnot that are exposed to this. Um, so it's just a matter of trying to learn as much as possible before we start to see cases, literally like an actual, like, well, there's the eighth case was just um, diagnosed in Boston. And for the most part, all these people are, you know, the ones that are getting it so far, being identified with it, are the ones that have just been to China, with the exception of the one gentleman whose wife went to China, and then she came back and gave it to him, and he got sick. But there isn't cause for relaxation yet. They're like, oh, it's only, you know, it's only these people and blah, 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 because... People are infectious for well, who knows exactly how long they're truly infectious for, but they can be infectious for up to 14 days. That's what they've been seeing, that there could be as long as a 14-day incubation period. Um, and when people are... Um, when people get it and they have the virus, the infectiousness, uh, to use just a lesser scientific -y term than say something like R, well, this thing called an R naught, but basically like how likely is it to spread from person to person, it seems to be, well, and when I say seems, there's just, there's a lot of studies coming out. They're very small. Most of them are coming from China, just from observations for most of it. Um, you know, it, it's one of those things where it could be as contagious as um, the flu. And people want to say, oh, well... Uh, SARS, you know, um, when they had a SARS outbreak so many years ago, you know, they, that one was worse. That one was, you know, they had so many dead and so many infected and the, you know, the thing about SARS was that people knew it was coming for months before it actually arrived. Um, you know, the, between the time of the first case and when it actually kind of exploded in numbers of cases was several months. So when it was finally seen, the, the crackdown was immediate, and it didn't really spread. And um, the thing about this is that it likely spread way before it was realized what was going on. The problem is, is that when these things start in China, sometimes the state has such a desire to control the narrative that they don't allow for free speech and for people who might be wanting to warn people there's an issue. Um, how do I say this? Uh, again, not to try and scare anybody. I'm not here to do that. I'm just here to talk about this. Um, but there were doctors who were seeing these cases when they first came through and who voiced uh, concern in a... It was a private chat, but it still was a chat nonetheless, among others, among different professionals... China tried to kind of shut it down a little bit. It makes you wonder if, I mean, as, as aggressive as their containment protocols have been in the last week, I mean, not, I mean, has it been a whole week yet? Maybe. I can't quite remember. I remember I think I first heard about it a week ago, maybe Wednesday. 
and anyway, so tons of containment, likely a bit too late, but still hopefully enough to save a lot of people hopefully from being sick and potentially dying. There's, for, but there's, yeah, there's what, like 50 plus studies out right now. Most of them are not double, you know, peer reviewed, checked over to make sure that they are, um, you know, accurate per se. I mean, you, there's really no accuracy right now that you can swear by because you have just, you just want as much information out there as possible right away. Oops, right away. I cut myself off there. Um, so some stuff that comes out makes it sound probably worse than it is, and some stuff that comes out makes it sound less than less worrisome than what it is. But the things that make you go, huh, are one, well just what just came out was that China has asked the European Union for help in expediting the procurement of medical supplies. <sighs> and I, 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 I hope that's, you know, I think that's real. I mean, it seems like it seems rational. What's interesting is that they asked the EU versus asking, like, um, U.S. or whatnot, but probably that trade war thing is doesn't make him want to reach out that much, but um, if the number of infections that they are touting, which on the, there's like a world outbreak um, graph that, um, or map, I should say, that's, that is autom automatically updated when somebody enters new case numbers for certain, you know, any country basically that, um, Uh, what's the word? Um, reports a reports a case, and it goes through like CDC or the WHO or whatever. They post it, and so somehow somebody has this algorithm that has created a map. It's just all pretty cool. And so the funny thing is, is that China's numbers have been crawling pretty slowly. You know, at first it was like, you know. 1,000 cases, 3,000 cases, 6,000 cases, you know, it was jumping. And the last day or two, it's kind of me meandered from like 8,800 cases to 9,700 cases to, I don't know, is it, is it 10,000 cases? Yeah, I, I don't remember, but it's slow. Like the number of case diagnoses are like just... And you would think, oh, they've contained it. They're slowing it down. Yeah, but they're also building two brand new hospitals, like, from scratch. And now they're asking the EU for help with medical supplies? That doesn't sound like something that is just, you know, 10,000 people sick. I mean, spread across a country like China that has how many billion? That's nothing. But there's only so many test case or tests that they can that they can do. They probably don't have unlimited resources in terms of testing. It's likely that the ones that are being tested are the ones that are the most sick. I just and it's not I mean honestly, it's not even really us. It's not even like America or the EU or the UK, but it's, uh, it's a lot of different things going on. This is a really crazy time right now to be in the news, or I shouldn't say in the news, watching the news. I usually don't like to watch the news, but right now I feel like I've got to because of all this crazy stuff that's happening between the coronavirus and Brexit and other things. 
It's crazy, guys. That's why cross-stitching is the way of the future. Well, it's also the way of the past. It's the way of everything. But anyway, you know, it's, uh, how do I say this? It's hard to formulate your thoughts while you're cross-stitching and I'm not trying to be an alarmist. I am a, I like to call myself a scientist. Technically I am. Um, and if we could just get accurate numbers out of China, and I fear that well, unfortunately what's going to happen is, is they're going to crack down so much on how bad it actually is that it's going to lull others into a false sense of security. Little Princess Leia has woken up, drinking water over there. But, uh, I was really interested when the, this is going to be science-y, I was really interested when the Middle Eastern coronavirus came out, uh, God, it was probably seven years ago, six, seven years ago at least, uh, the Middle Eastern I want to call it the respiratory syncytial virus. MERS is what I think it was. And it was crazy coronavirus. Really unique because I believe it came from camels. I haven't looked at it in a while, so I couldn't tell you 100%. But I think that was the camel virus that had mutated and gotten into people. And, oh, I liked I remember being worried about it because I never liked novel diseases. I never liked diseases we've never seen before or bodies we've never seen before. It always makes me nervous. And they had, you know, some an outbreak here or there everywhere. But they were able to eventually control it. And I think, I'm trying to remember what the reason was. There was might have been that there was a short latency time, a short delay between infection and um, when you got sick. So it was easier to quarantine people and get rid of the disease because you could quarantine people right, you know, for like two or three days and that would be it. And that's all I needed. This one's a lot harder. 14 days. When the, when the, plane was coming back to the United States from China and it had you know different diplomats and other people that were coming back and they said oh we're gonna hold on to him for three days it was like what are you guys talking about and um, three days is nothing they've been they've been saying from the beginning that 14 days is like seems to be the potential length of time between when you contract and when you get sick. So, you know, even people that came back, and it's about, once you start showing symptoms, I think they said five days from when you start showing symptoms to where you can really be in serious trouble. Um, but if, if it's going to go south for you. Um, but... vast majority of people, that's not going to happen. Um, but if you're immunocompromised, small child, older person, other medical issues, then you kind of need to be safe. I'm just like all meandering all over the place with this topic, though. I'm uh, there's there's no I'm not really presenting a valid. No, I shouldn't say valid. I'm not presenting a cohesive opinion here. I'm just saying I would like to be educated. And I think that China is not telling us the truth. And and I love cross stitch. Tell you what, though, regardless of how well that influenza virus or influenza vaccine worked this year, I am definitely getting it uh, next year. 
the vaccine, not the not the virus. I don't want to get the virus again. I've been sick two years in a row. Really down, too. This year was as bad as it was the year before. This year felt worse. And I think that it's time to get that done. Or will be time next year. And if they come up with a coronavirus vaccine, or when they come up with a vaccine for this virus sometime late this year, um, I'll definitely contemplate getting that as well. a nap but I don't take 15 minute naps I take three hour naps three hour nap so you notice I'm using like short strands of floss I do that with this pattern um, it's just something that I just I, I just do I think it has something to do with the fabric or the stitching 100% sure, but there's some there's some kind of thing that makes me do that with this particular project. Oh, sorry for the yawnage. Oh boy. Okay, what else are we gonna do here? Hmm. There it is. I was about to say, where did my needle go? I found it. I can't believe this is finally at the bottom left of this project. It's awesome. I got that Gilligan song in my head. Hot diggity dog. Making some progress. Making some progress. Boop, 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 boop. So let me think in my head here and out loud at the same time. So I'm thinking, obviously Reaper and It Is Well should be priorities this year, so I can get some finishes. And I need to stitch some on It Is Well. Get back on that. I just messed up everything. Oh my goodness gracious, guys. <laughs> um, but and It Is Well, I can definitely, I mean, I could... Get a good, get a big size chunk done here soon. Um, but after that, rainy watering place for sure. Old world map two is causing me a little bit of hesitation. I think it really is because I'm struggling with this one page. I really do just need to kind of focus myself on it. Did I tell you guys that we're thinking about? Um, Changing up my organization downstairs from a cross stitch. Uh, I might have mentioned it in the stitch, in the weekly stitchy thing, but specifically, what we're looking at is ways to make me more productive stitching where I'm currently stitching, which is at the computer 
uh, little table that I have there next to the hubby's setup as well. Um, and what we would do is we would bring over all of um, all of the uh, the the whole system I have up on the wall with the uh, the little blue um, containers. And um, so, like, just the organizational wall that I put, like, you know, here's my floss for the, for the 600 DMCs, and then here they are for the 700 DMCs. And so I have it up on a, hanging on a wall. We would move that to where my table is, um, where I'm sitting at, so I don't have to get up and go over and... Uh, all the time. And also it would help me organize, keep organized what's already on my desk, because man, my desk is a mess with all this floss everywhere. I'm messy by nature. Or shall we say lazy by nature? Lazy by nature, that's for sure. At least when it comes to cleaning. But that might help. So we're thinking about doing that. I'm way better at putting all my projects in project bags whenever I'm not working on them and keeping them away from the dogs. Way better at that than I used to be. As you notice, if you've been watching for a while, have not had any issues with dogs destroying projects as of late, which is fantastic. But I think that would help if I move the organization stuff over. I think that would help a lot. Hmm. Oh, I tell you guys, I think I've told you this though. Um, got our recycling back. We had to, our prior trash removal service took, you know, said they couldn't do recycling anymore. And I, I think their business is really suffering. I think they're going down, to be honest with you, because. Um, so we had, uh, you know, we moved from them, like, I don't know, it's got to have been almost two months now. And I think I've had three different weeks in that two months where I've had, because I'm still on their, their email, or not email, they're still on their call list or their text list. And they it's like every other week they'll be like, hey, we're really sorry, our driver's running late. Keep your stuff out. We're going to pick it up either tonight or tomorrow morning. Or, hey, we can't come today because it's too windy. I don't want to come when it's too windy. 
for some reason they can't do it. And uh, so, I mean, we're so glad that we switched. Not only that, but they gave us uh, they gave us containers that are like fifty percent, at least fifty percent bigger than our the containers we were using before that we bought ourselves. So it's just been really nice, and we get to recycle again, which makes us really happy. Oh, so carbon capture device. Let's go back to that. So I did some research last week after I talked to you guys. And what I found out was that, no, there is no personal carbon capture device really that's available at this point that at least I could buy commercially that I can find. There are some companies that are creating carbon capture factories where they really kind of suck air in through the use of a fan of some kind and then use some sort of special filtration to pull carbon out of the air. And I uh, found some more, some, some interesting things about some different companies and whatnot. It was very, very fascinating. Pretty cool stuff. But somebody is going to come up with a carbon capture device personal carbon capture device we can all do because somebody's going to want to make a buck and hopefully it at least works but you know kind of like how I use a um, my filter on my, my furnace or my air conditioner and it traps all that stuff I want to get I want to get one like that to capture carbon it's going to be cool Probably go to bed at like eight o'clock tonight. Oh, that's how it's been lately. Okay, and then I fell asleep. No, like I'm serious. <laughs> I was, uh, I was like, I stopped, I paused the camera for a second, and then I, I went next door into the bedroom, and I was like, oh, let me just, let me, let me just lay down for just a second, and, uh, and I'll just, uh, you know, close my eyes, and I don't know how long I actually slept. Uh, I kept kind of going out a little bit, and come back in, going out, come back in. Uh, it's kind of funny. But, and I was like, I better get up or I'm going to end up laying here. Whew. Felt good. I feel rejuvenated. But thankfully it wasn't three hours. Who knows how long it was. I won't know until I go downstairs. The cat got fed. Cat's happy. I'm just trying to, here we go. I'm just, I'm sitting here trying to just thread this. Thread it. All right, we're going to work on this part, and then I'm going to go downstairs and load it all up. All right. Ah. All right. So I say, I say, I say. Oh, but that felt good to sleep a little bit. That wasn't making a whole lot of sense before. I 
But now I am. Not really. I'm still not making a lot of sense. Do, 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 do. Suzu's out there. No, oh, that's not Suzu. That's Bailey. Bailey dog. I'm going to take a t-shirt down and put it on. Jelly. Nah, I think what I'm going to do is to just turn the heat up a little bit because it's already starting to turn. It feels like it's cold. But Jelly is like... She's got like the kind of hair that's almost like just... I don't know. She's kind of bald, I suppose you could say. She's uh, very short-coated and just no, no kind of heat protection whatsoever. I tried putting a shirt on her way back when. I don't think she cared for it a whole lot. I think she has to get used to it. I think that's part of it, but I wanted to Keep her a little warmer. Oh man, see that's like that was like pretty good nappage. That's the kind of nappage that I need on a week and day, whatever long it was, whatever sh hopefully short period of time it was. I'm just repeating myself because I'm thinking about it. But I get done with this this strand. I think we'll call it a we'll call it a stitch with me. So I can get downstairs and start loading this baby up. I'm gonna try and get it loaded up tonight. Last week, well, last week I had another episode when I was trying to load it up where I had done it and I had it uploaded twice because it got frozen at about. 85% it was just frozen and I don't know what had happened so it was already like 9 o'clock at night and I'm like ah let me just restart it because something's not right so I was able to get that taken care of I don't want to try and get this up tonight hopefully tomorrow I'll feel more motivated to do some other videos and such. Okay, get back in that groove. Ooh. 